Okay, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, articulation in flute playing. Um, you could write a book, uh, and I'm sure what I say probably will just scratch the surface of the challenge of articulating subtly and supply on the flute. I think one of the most important things to say about articulation is to try and um, analyze what happens when we speak rather than when we play the flute because I think you'll find that you do things much more smoothly when you speak than when you play the flute. Uh, one thing that I focus on a lot in the way I think about um, articulation. I've noticed that it takes a lot more subtlety and control to connect notes together than to separate them. So in your mind, I think, always try to think of how you connect notes together in the way you articulate them, not how you separate the notes. Because when there's a big separation between notes, there's also a tension between them and a lack of fluidity between them. And I think this uh, creates problems with the mechanism of articulating. So really focus on how to connect and merge the various uh, movements rather than overemphasizing them. That's one thing which creates a, an awareness and a way of thinking that I think will lead to a more relaxed and flowing and natural articulation. The other very, very important aspect, again, is about concept. What we're trying to do is to become more aware and to listen more acutely. That's more important than choosing which muscles to use, which area of the tongue to use. I think it's better to leave this a little bit ambiguous, a little bit free from preconceived ideas, taking into account that we all have different mouths and different aims with our sound. Um, it's very difficult to define the muscles that we use. Much better to define the aim and to create that almost without thinking and then understand what we're doing. Okay? I'll give you an example. Supposing you say, I love you, all right? And you say it really slowly, really slowly. Okay, and the aim of, of saying this is to try and create as smooth a transition between vowel and consonant, which are almost like fire and water, they're opposites. See if you can merge the differences and make them flow into each other. Do it in slow motion. I'll give you an example, I'll come close. Do it again. Okay, so we have a flow between consonant and vowel, and we're trying to cut out any rough or sudden edges to this trans these transitions. Now when you analyze what's happening in your mouth, it's beyond understanding how many movements are happening uh, between the cheeks, the tongue, the lips, the throat, the airflow, the vocal cords. Oh God, I've missed several galaxies of movements, okay? 
So the issue is not just the tongue. So uh, the other interesting thing is that although you, I just created a very smooth transition between all these sounds, I wasn't conscious of all those movements. So as far as I'm concerned, the devil is to know exactly what every muscle should be doing. These preconceived ideas wreak havoc on your sense of spontaneity and naturalness in the playing. Don't go there. Don't go there. But define what you want. Okay? So, when you realize what a fantastic thing the smallest movement can achieve in your sound, you start to realize how crucial it is to stay relaxed and to keep the movements refined, simple, manageable, no large movements, okay? And the overriding factor is flow and roundness. If you can achieve that, I think you're well on the way to finding a subtlety of articulation that, that is really uh, beautiful to listen to. Okay, bye.